Now that we've outlined what to expect, let's proceed. The indications for abdominal vascular sonography may include clinical evidence of hepatoportal disease, chronic mesenteric ischemia or angina, renovascular hypertension, renal fibromuscular dysplasia, abdominal aortic aneurysm, aortic bifurcation disease, and obstruction to venous outflow through the inferior vena cava. The goals for performing visceral vascular examinations therefore include determination of the presence or absence of arterial stenosis or venous thrombosis, determination of the presence of increased vascular resistance in the renal parenchyma, and identification of visceral artery or aortic aneurysm and documentation of the size and location. Duplex scanning with color flow imaging is uniquely suited to these tasks. This portion of the tape discusses the visceral vascular anatomy and the internal and external landmarks we will use for successful evaluation of each of the abdominal vascular systems. Using the layered anatomy model, we will identify the aorta and its branches, the mesenteric and renal arteries, the inferior vena cava and the renal veins, and the hepatoportal venous system. The xiphoid process is the first external landmark at which the major abdominal vessels can be located. We will begin with identification of the abdominal aorta. The examination begins with the aorta because the blood flow velocity in the renal arteries and mesenteric artery is directly related to the blood flow velocity in the aorta, the major inflow vessel to the abdomen. As you will note, the patient is initially placed in the supine position with the head of the bed elevated. The transducer is placed on the abdomen slightly left of midline, just beneath the xiphoid process in the longitudinal plane. From this position, we should be able to image the abdominal aorta in long axis. The aorta can be viewed as it travels distally through the abdomen to its bifurcation at the level of the umbilicus. Let's go back now to a view of the proximal aorta just below the diaphragm. The celiac trunk will be seen arising from the anterior wall of the aorta one to two centimeters below the diaphragm. This vessel will generally move anteriorly for a centimeter or two before it divides into the left gastric, common hepatic, and splenic arteries. The celiac trunk and its branches will be better viewed from the transverse image of the aorta as we proceed with the examination. Just a centimeter or two distal to the origin of the celiac trunk, we'll see the superior mesenteric artery arising from the anterior wall of the aorta. Occasionally, these vessels share a common origin. The superior mesenteric artery, or SMA, angles caudally to the right of the screen and will travel parallel to the aorta as it moves distally toward the aortic bifurcation. From the longitudinal image of the aorta at the level of the celiac and superior mesenteric arteries, we can rotate the transducer 90 degrees to image the aorta in the transverse plane. At this same level, we'll note the SMA anterior to the aorta. It will appear disc-like as the ultrasound beam transects this vessel as it parallels the aorta. If we move the probe slightly cephalad, we should see the celiac axis. It will appear stem-like as it moves away from the aortic wall. If we continue to angle the beam just a bit cephalad, we'll obtain an image of the common hepatic and splenic arteries as they branch from the celiac trunk. You can see the seagull appearance of the three vessels. The probe can be rotated to oblique positions, moving it slightly to the patient's right to image the common hepatic artery in its longitudinal plane and to the patient's left to obtain a longitudinal view of the splenic artery. 
Let's return to the transverse view of the aorta at the level of the superior mesenteric artery. Using very light probe pressure, we should see the left renal vein as it crosses anterior to the aorta. This vein will serve as an important landmark for locating the renal arteries. In a small number of patients, the left renal vein will move beneath the aorta as it makes its way to the inferior vena cava on the patient's right side. Once the left renal vein is located, the sound beam should be directed to the right side of the aorta, and the probe should be angled ever so slightly cephalad to image the right renal artery. This vessel will arc anteriorly as it arises from the posterior lateral wall of the aorta, and then course posterior laterally through the abdomen to move posterior to the inferior vena cava and enter the hilum of the right kidney. The renal vein may be in view as we follow the course of the renal artery along its proximal to mid segment. If we return to the transverse image of the aorta at the level of the left renal vein and angle the probe ever so slightly to the left of the aorta, we should image the left renal artery. This vessel will move quickly away from the aorta and course through the posterior lateral abdomen running alongside the left renal vein to enter the hilum of the left kidney.